To bombshell developments in one of the strangest cold case mysteries in Jacksonville's history, a beloved father and husband murdered, a 43-year-old cold case solved, and then, before the case can actually go to trial, a key witness dies. Today's conclusion to the Freddie Farah case was indeed stranger than fiction, as confessed killer Johnny Miller walked out of jail a free man. Prosecutors agreed to let Miller plead guilty in exchange for time served, 344 days in jail. We do have live team coverage for you tonight. Our Shelby Danielson spoke to Freddie Farah's family. She'll have their reaction in just a few minutes. Well, let's go first to Ann Sheila. She was in court today, and Ann, it was definitely emotional today and very dramatic, too. That's right. Today, four children and a widow were in court to hear their father and husband's killer plead guilty. In recent years, Mr. Miller has been a popular street performer in New Orleans known as Uncle Louie. But the now frail 61 year old was just 17 when he shot Freddie Farah in a botched robbery in 1974. Police solved that cold case last year using fingerprint evidence, but their case depended on an eyewitness who recently died. When it became clear the state couldn't pursue the case criminally, state attorney Melissa Nelson said that they all worked to help the family, including Farah's only son, Bobby, find some resolution. As Bobby told you, one of his early requests of Pam was to sit down with Mr. Miller. And so, ironically, um, this, the loss of this evidence is what prompted this meeting with um, Mr. Miller because it was very important to them. Um, JSO did an incredible job after 43 years of answering the question of who. And because of Pam's relationship with them and um, the defendant's willingness to admit his guilt, we were then able to give them a forum where they could have their questions about how and why answered. What do you think of the family's ability? Now this is the second time Melissa Nelson's office has helped coordinate a meeting between victims and perpetrators. It's part of a new movement called Restorative Justice and it's designed to help victims of crime heal. Live at the Duval County Courthouse in downtown Jacksonville, Ann Schindler, First Coast News on your side. And you know, the immediate assumption is to think that Freddie Ferris family must be angry about the turn of events, but in fact, we've learned their blessing. They actually put their blessing on this plea deal. And that's all because they met the killer, Johnny Miller, face to face, as Ann was just talking about. Shelby Downs has spoke to Ferris family, and she joins us live. Shelby. Well, that meeting just happened last week as Ann was talking about and the Farahs all asked their questions and Miller gave them answers. Something they said meant much more to them than seeing a life sentence served. He told us he had been there two to three times a day, almost every day. He was 16, 17 years old. Bobby Farah, the only son of Freddie Farah, says he asked now convicted murderer Johnny Miller why he killed his dad. First he said he found the gun, okay? Um, he carried it in the store, was going to show the gun to my dad. That's when everything changed. I asked him, why would you rob a store that you go into every single day? And he said it was the biggest, stupidest decision that he ever made. This was a conversation that happened in person between Miller and Freddie Farah's wife and four kids last Friday. In court today, the family of five each had a long letter read aloud by the state's prosecutor as they stood by her side. Then a home video playing tribute to their dad. The courtroom was moved to tears. It is obvious to me that your family has allowed your faith to lead the way. Judge Angela Cox broke the silence by praising Nadia Farah for being a great mother and a strong leader after losing her husband. Oh, <laughs> the love of my life, <laughs> the father of my children, my confidant. What can you say about the greatest man on earth? Uh, that's why I never remarried. There, there was no one that can take his place. She says she forgave Miller a long time ago, but now this final hearing helps seal decades of her. I have grandchildren, 16 and 17, at the age that he committed this crime, and I can see the childishness in a 16 and 17 year old and the impulsiveness. So, you know, I can forgive. It, it does me no good him sitting in jail and me not having my answers. I was a six year old kid and wondered all my life, why and who killed my dad. So I'm at peace.
And Bobby Farah went on to say that in some way he does feel sorry for Miller. He says he was homeless before all of this happened, and as he's a free man, eventually he says he'll be homeless again. In the courtroom today, as this all wrapped up, Miller turned around and mouthed the words, thank you to the family. Reporting live at the courthouse, Shelby Danielson, First Coast News, on your side.